Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. So today we are working on the second half of making the carriage stop uh, for the Lodge and Shipley lathe out here at the George Museum of Agriculture where I volunteer at. And um, this is just a project I got going on because I've got an upcoming project. This is going to be kind of a production run. I need to be able to stop the carriage uh, repeatedly back on the same place multiple times and it will have three different stops built into it. So this is the second part of the video series. If you missed the first part, uh, you can go back and catch that part first if you like. So um, next, the, the, the body is pretty much all milled out now. And next I want to work on the actual arms uh, that will come in here and swing down. And I got a piece of uh, cold roll steel here that we're going to make this out of. It's one inch uh, by inch and a quarter uh, uh, rectangular stock. And uh, that basically will just fit right down these little mill slots that we put in here. And so I need to cut two of these uh, three inches long and uh, we'll go do that over on the bandsaw. All right, now with the arms cut, uh, we're gonna go ahead and drill and tap the um, holes in here that we will thread the bolt down. And it's gonna be half inch 13. Uh, so we'll start with the center drill, drill that out, and then tap them real quick. Now that we've got all the uh, holes drilled and tapped for the uh, half inch uh, stops that will go in here, the two in the arms and the one in the body, uh, I want to go ahead and drill and tap a hole here in the bottom uh, that will be for the clamp. So um, there will be this piece here that will basically clamp onto the bottom here. It sticks out a half inch that goes up underneath the lip uh, underneath the V-way and uh, we're going to have a hole here and then probably a pin here just to kind of help index it to keep it from flopping around. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and drill this out and I decided to go with a 7 16 uh, 7 16 inch 14 threads per inch uh, bolt on that. Um, so we got a letter U drill bit in here and uh, we're going to go ahead and drill that out and uh, tap the hole for this. All right, so the next thing we want in this design is I want to have a little pin uh, right here uh, that's, again, just going to kind of help index this. We'll tighten up on this one, but this will just keep that bottom piece from rotating and flopping. So I've got a, a quarter inch roll pin, and uh, we're just going to drill a quarter inch hole there, and uh, we'll just press this in, and that should be plenty adequate. Again, it's, again, it's just to keep that bottom piece from moving laterally. and. Uh, uh, so I'll just take a quarter inch drill bit and we'll drill about half the depth of this roll pin. The distance on this, I want to move this over about an inch and a half or move it over a inch and a half, not about, but, uh, and I'm just going to use the digital readout on the mill for that. So we'll unlock the table and just dial it out 1.5 inches. Right there. My depth on this is going to be a half inch, and I'm just going to watch my scale up here uh, on the mill uh, to read that.
continuing on here, uh, this is now the clamp piece that will go into the bottom. And um, I've just got a center punch there uh, where I've measured out the hole for the, uh, the, the bolt will go through to tighten this up. So we got a 7 16 inch bolt and I'm gonna drill this out just a 64th over. So we got a 29 64 drill bit. Right now I'm just finding the center uh, there using a little uh, tap follower. Uh, to get that center hole lined up. It's not a super critical measurement, so I'm not worrying about uh, getting in here and using the DRO and indexing off the edge and all that. I could, but there's just really no reason to do it. Just picking my drill bit up off the floor. All right, so we're just gonna punch that hole in there. And then again, uh, I will, on this next hole here, it, it'll be in perfectly in line with this one, but I'll just use a DRO again. We'll go over and punch that hole for the, the alignment pin. We've got our next drill bit in. So again, we're gonna move our table over an inch and a half. and punch that hole through. All right, moving right along on this, but uh, ran into a little roadblock here. So I don't know exactly how I screwed this up, but if you look, my pin is not lining up in there. You know, I moved it over an inch and a half, I thought on both times, but whatever reason it's not, but no big deal. I think we can salvage this without any big deal at all. Um, this pin is really more for side to side movement. So we're just gonna come in here, drop an end mill down that hole and just make a slot. And uh, that slot will serve the purpose. So uh, we're gonna put this back in the mill and, and uh, knock that out real quick. So after some modifications here, we're in good shape now. So that pin fits just right. Let's go try it out on the lathe. So as you can see, the bottom kind of swings loose, but we'll go up on that pin to kind of hold it in place. So it's easy to set in here. You can uh, swing this in place, tighten up the bolt on the bottom. And now that is clamped in place firmly. So I'm happy with the clamp. So now we need to put the, uh, make the pin to go through here and uh, drill and put in our uh, pivots for our swing down arms. Ready now to put the holes through here that will become the, the pivot pin for the uh, swing down arms. And I'm just gonna use a uh, quarter inch bolt for that. Uh, I've got a long one here that should go down through there and uh, give us a good, uh, bearing surface on there and we're going to punch a quarter inch hole through this uh, top piece here through the second piece and i'll actually just start it into the bottom and then we'll switch over to a number seven drill bit and that'll be a uh, tapped uh, quarter 20 for this to screw down into uh, so i've got this uh, basically coming in a half inch from this edge a half inch from the bottom uh, and that's going to go all the way through and uh, you know we put this in here because this was rough sawn edges I did make sure that we came in here and put a square in there uh, to make sure that that is uh, perfectly perpendicular that we'll be drilling down and I've got a center hole already in there and uh, we'll go ahead and drill this
So with the uh, pilot hole all the way through, I want to go ahead and uh, drill the holes for my swing down arms. And uh, the best way to do that, I think, is to just drill them in place. Uh, we've already set up here, and that way they'll, we'll have them perfectly aligned. So I've taken a C-clamp, and I've just got the top one clamped in. Uh, you know, the, the back is just flush here. Uh, you know, I'm just feeling that with my, my fingers. It's not anything. It's got to be just, you know, dead on. But, uh, you know, that's pretty darn close. So that's good enough for what we're doing here. So we're going to go ahead and punch through this, and uh, then we'll do the uh, other arm as well. I got the swing arms here with the holes drilled, and what I need to do now is cut out, notch out the back side, put a little radius on there, uh, just so that it will swing. Um, and uh, this is a, we, we drilled this half inch, half inch. This is a one inch diameter uh, circle, and I just used a little uh, radius gauge to mark that on there with. And uh, I'm gonna rough this out on the bandsaw, and then we'll go over to the grinder and uh, smooth that out and get it uh, cut out to that, uh, that arc. Did a little bit more grinding off camera here and uh, got these uh, fitting together real good now so um, see how they fit pins go in I haven't got the bottom drilled and tapped yet uh, but these arms will just swing up and go back and if you notice I got them going back just a little bit past center so that uh, they're the weight will hopefully hold back and they won't fall over on their own but uh, both stops uh, are pivoting real good just like we want so um, drill and tap the hole in the bottom and uh, we'll be very close to being done with this so the last thing to do on here now is to go ahead and drill and tap this uh, quarter 20 uh, hole in the bottom uh, one question I'm sure some of you are going to ask is why I decided to go with a quarter of an inch on this uh, uh, ideally I think I would have liked to have had a pin that was just a little bit bigger but I had a long reach uh, quarter 20 tap and uh, that's really the reason I chose to go with that. I didn't have a, a, a pulley tap. They call these pulley taps a lot of times because they were often used to bore or to tap the uh, set screws on a pulley so you needed a long tap to get down through the rim of the pulley in there. But anyway, I had, I had a couple of these quarter 20 size and I've got some that are larger size but bigger than I would need for this. But anyway, that's my reasoning behind that. It's just what I had on hand and for quarter 20 of course uh, you need to drill with a number seven drill bit. So uh, let's go ahead and get that done. So here it is, all finished up, mounted on the machine, and you can see I've got some different length bolts in here, uh, and I can swap those out uh, with, you know, just standard half inch bolts out of my uh, bolt pile for depending on what I need to do, shorter or longer bolts. Uh, but as you can see, we can come in here, we can pull the carriage up, stop it on that stop right there, and I can do a part, do an operation up here, and be able to go back time and time again to the same place, and then if I Doing another operation, you drop down the second stop, 
and you got a second stop and then a third stop. And of course you can adjust these. I uh, got the lock nut on there to lock that in place so it doesn't move around. And uh, all in all, I think we got a nice new um, attachment here that will make uh, the lathe a little more easier to use, particularly in a situation where I'm wanting to repeat an operation over and over again. And like I mentioned in the first video, uh, we've got a job coming up pretty quick uh, that's going to need just that. Hence the reason for building this. Well, that'll make a wrap on this video. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing the process of making this. Hope you uh, maybe get some ideas of making one for your own to fit your own lathe. Obviously, uh, dimensions and everything will vary depending on uh, your individual lathe. It's a fairly simple design uh, and should be widely adaptable to a lot of different uh, uh, machines out there if you wanted to build something along these lines. So, as always, thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.